we shall be reading from the Epistle of James, the Epistle of James, chapter 5 and verse 7. Chapter 5, verse 7, the Epistle of James the Apostle. The Epistle of James 5, 7. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and later rain. You also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Amen. The realization of the people who wait in patience with all assurance is that they know through personal experience that God is compassionate and merciful. Does not know that He is righteous? I don't want to know the righteousness of God, or with the compassion of Christ. Because if I stand before the righteousness of God, I'm lost. I want to be found before the mercy of God, the compassion of God, the love of God, the long-suffering of God. But who knows that God is very compassionate and merciful? Who knows, in other words, the end of the Lord as it is written? and see the end of the Lord, that He is very compassionate and merciful. This is the, our biggest comfort, my brethren. Whatever that might happen in your life now, whatever might be going on, whatever has happened in the past, whether good or bad, or even very, very bad, or even lethal, or either the end. What you will wait for is to see the end of the Lord. What Christ will do in the end. What will Christ do in the end? What will He do? What can He do? The answer is great things to those who wait for Him. Great things. He doesn't ask for you to have the perseverance of Job. His children are gone. His perceptions are gone. All His goods gone. The devil went before God and said, Do you see Him? How blessed He is. You bless Him. Stop blessing Him and you see what He will do. He will not praise you anymore. Let me take everything from him, what you have given him. And then you will see what Job is really like. And he took them all and God let him. You know why? Because God trusted Job. He was trustworthy before the eyes of God. Take everything from him. And he did. And Job said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Only the good things will glorify Him. The devil got angry and fierce. Let me take his health away also. And then you will see that he will curse you to your face. Go. And he struck Job with painful boils. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And took himself a potsherd to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. His friends saw him were frightened, and everyone saw him and said, This is the punishment from God. But Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. My brethren, and with this message we will end today. Do you know that your Redeemer lives? 
That's what Job said. I know that my Redeemer lives. And Christ hadn't risen yet. By faith, he saw the eternal God judgment. But we know that Jesus Christ is in our midst. I know that my Redeemer lives. And when everyone judged him, condemned him, reproached him, abandoned him, they all left him alone. Job remained. Then God turned and said to him, Now be dressed with majesty. Now you will see what I will do in your life. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And Job said, Until now I heard your voice, but now I see your face. Glory to God. My beloved brethren, say it. Say it. I know that my Redeemer lives. And I'm waiting to see the end of the Lord. To know that He is very compassionate and merciful, good, long-suffering, and He loves me with everlasting love. And I am waiting the end of the Lord. Don't look left and right. Don't look at the black clouds. Behind all these things, there is your Redeemer, your Saviour. Glory, glory to the name of Jesus. Glory, glory to the name of Jesus. Do not give up. So, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth and waits patiently until it receives the early and the later rain. The early rain comes right after the sowing, as did happen in the first apostolic church. The later rain will come down just before the harvest, as it will be done in the last apostolic church. I say it again. The early rain will come after the sowing. The later rain, just before the harvest. And the farmer waits patiently. And the word of God says, Be patient, my brethren. Be patient with those who reproach you. Be patient with those who deal with you unrightly. Show patience with those who wound you. I'll be bold enough to say something even harder. Show patience with God who is delaying. But He is not. He is long-suffering. So everyone can come to repentance. So you can see those who you are praying for. For God to do great things for them also. Show patience therefore. Amen brethren. Show patience. Wait. Wait. The later rain is coming. But don't wait in laziness. Ask for a downfall. In the time of the later rain. Remember what we said in the beginning. What the message of God was. Ask for a downpour. We are there now. Right there. Now. It's good that you are weeping. It's good. That you are crying out to God. But add something. To your prayer. This more hope. Lord. Now that you are preparing. To bless. Bless me also. Exceedingly. Send to me. A downpour. Now that you are preparing to open the waterfalls from heaven, I want you to rain on my field. I want you to rain on my house and in my life. Not a small blessing. I want the waterfalls from heaven. And cry. Weep. And cry out. If you cry out to me, I will do great things. In your life, says the Lord. Amen.